This is Nick here for Into Boxing and I am delighted to be joined by Spencer Oliver. First of all, Spencer, how are we? You know what, I'm really good. How are you? Um, this is uh, yeah, it's something a little bit different, isn't it? Anfield, Anfield Football Club, Liverpool Football Club, doing the press conference from Liam Smith. Yeah, it's been a really good day, actually. And what about the weather, by the way? How was that? Unbelievable. I'm glad I didn't get a sunburn today because uh, I don't tan anymore. So uh, I'll take that. That's a win for me. Um, as you say, you're here in Liverpool. Massive fight week for Liam Smith. Let's start with him first of all. Um, got a big fight against Hassan Maquinho. Maqui uh, yeah, just call him Hassan. <laughs> um, dangerous opponent for him. 14 knockouts in his 20 wins. Maquinho. I think it is McQueenu. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a dangerous opponent, you know, McQueenu, McQueenu. Yeah, whatever it is. Anyway, Hassan, yeah, he's a dangerous opponent. Um, he's a guy that has been over here before. We saw him a few years ago against Sam Eggington and he upset the cart then actually in, um, in a big upset and took him, Sam Eggington out in a couple of rounds. So he proved that he's very dangerous. Liam sparred with him before. He used to box over here with Liam. Liam knows that it's a it's a high risk, low reward fight, but he wants to continue that journey onto world title honours. And um, if this is what he's got to go through, this is what he's got to go through, you know. So he's accepted the fight. But it's a, it's a dangerous fight. It's a, big, it's a big risk. Obviously, he'll be looking for a second world title, but he's got to come through this. I think you said that big risk. Not, not the, ma the massive reward, because it's not the name that everyone probably would have looked at. But still, you've got to get through it to get to those big fights. Absolutely. You know, like I say, the ultimate goal is to win that world title again. And there was also talk of him boxing Eubank Jr. Eubank's now gone in with Conor Ben, so they're fighting October the 8th. If Liam comes through here and Eubank does come through, it's a fight that could possibly still happen. Depending on what goes on in this um, super welterweight division, you know, there's so many moving parts. Is um, Charlo going to move up? Will he vacate the belt? So, no one really knows. So, I think Liam's just playing the waiting game. Natasha Jonas also fighting in her home city, and I know she's buzzing about that big, big fight for a unification fight. Yeah. She's got the world title. She's now going for the uh, WBC title. Yeah, Patricia Bergelt, uh, uh, Bergelt who's the WBC champion in the unification bout. It's, it's a great story for Natasha, who's, you know, who's now 38 years of age, but it's, I love the story. She boxed with a super featherweight title against Terry Harper. A lot of people felt she won that. She got the draw, then moved up and boxed a pioneer against Katie Taylor, the pioneer of women's boxing. Pushed her all the way as well in an incredible fight. And then finally, last time out, moved up three weight divisions to win the WBO title. I'm glad she's got that. Now she's got the unification belt. So it's sort of cementing off a, a brilliant career, really. She's had, she was an unbelievable amateur. I think she won the ABAs five times, world bronze medalist. So, yeah, I'm really pleased for Tash. I like her. I like her a lot. And I think that she is a well-deserved. But this is a tough opponent in Berg, Bergholt, who's, like, like you say, the WBC champs, 15-0. She's got three KOs, but she knows her way around the ring. It's an interesting fight, actually. Um, it's, a, it's another fight I'm looking forward to, as I am with the British light heavyweight title fight as well, Dan Aziz. Um, yeah, I know he's going to jump onto that versus Shaq on Pitters, and that's a fight. That's the real 50-50 of the card, actually. No one really quite sure what way that goes. I like Aziz a lot. I like that sort of Tyson-esque sort of style he's got. But his boxing IQ is good as well, and Pitters, obviously, six foot six. Um, yeah, great fighter as well. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Not forgetting big Fraser Clark as well. We look, we're looking forward to him continuing his journey. So, boy, tune in Saturday night because there's so much going on. It certainly is. And uh, obviously Adam Azim on the card as well. Yeah. I was speaking to Adam there. He's one of those fighters that everyone's sort of talking about as one of the hottest properties in boxing right now. And he seems to just take that pressure on his shoulders and just ride with it. It doesn't seem to affect him at all. No, nah, this is one of those kids that sort of oozes confidence and he's got that championship star quality about him like you say where he he soaks up the moment as opposed to letting the pressure get to him so you know when you get fighters that come along and you see fighters like that you go yeah that kid's got it do you see what i'm saying like he feeds off the pressure so when you feed off pressure you know that you're going to be a champion and he's got that he's got that star quality about him so yeah he's he's one of the best young prospects in the country right now he's done nothing wrong so far um he had a win on his debut, which was a points win, and since then he's, he's knocked all his opponents out, and he's boxing incredibly well at the moment, so, yeah, looking forward to that. Stack card Saturday night. Let's reverse uh, a week or so ago. Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk to the rematch. You were out there in, uh, in Saudi. First of all, thoughts on AJ's performance? 
look, I thought he boxed well, you know, up until the ninth round. I think he had a good eighth round, but he, he um, and then in, uh, in the ninth round, he had a good eighth, and in the ninth, he thought he'd go for it, and he blew a gasket, basically, and Usyk ran away with it in the 10th, 11th, and 12th, and it, up until the ninth, I thought it was quite an even fight, but Usyk obviously won everything from there in, so look, it was a good performance. It was overshadowed by what AJ decided to do afterwards, getting in there, taking the belts, throwing the belts out of the ring, etc. And listen, we all know what happened. And I think that his emotionally just wasn't there. I think he may have been slightly concussed and he'd done something stupid. He apologised in the press conference afterwards. And I know a lot of people will say, well, that's not good enough because it's not. But, he did, you know, he'd done it. And it's like, you know, that's it. I saw what, when what happened after was that interview that I'd done, etc. with Joshua. I was trying to lend the geezer a little bit of support because at that time he was emotionally broken. You know, like he'd been crying a lot and he was emotionally broken. And I was just then gone, fuck, I'm a mate first and foremost. I'm going to have to lend him a little bit of support. I was telling him, you know, he was in the fight, but Usyk got it down the back stretch. And that's pretty much where we're at with it all. Um, we live in a world, unfortunately, where you're not allowed to lend people support in these tragic times and um, I know that people and I'll get a backlash from that people going well what about what he done with the belts I get that you know but he got that as well he recognised that he was wrong hence why he apologised to the Brit Ukrainian people he apologised to Usyk there was a lot of stuff that wasn't seen on there but you know he did do that um, it is what it is where does he go next for it still plenty of massive fights for Anthony Joshua out there yeah he's fighting again in December against a top 15 opponent. They're looking to get him back on winning ways. I don't know who that opponent will be yet, but there's some big fights out there, isn't there? Like with Parker Joyce going September 24th for the interim WBO title. That's a possibility in the very near future. You've got Deontay Wilders coming back against Hellenius. That's a possibility in the near future. Hergovic just had a good win against Zhang. That's a possibility. So look, there's loads of fights out there. Loads of fights out there because the guy's lost a couple of times. Don't write him off because I think without... Anthony Joshua in boxing today. One, there'll be a lot of people without jobs. That's a fact because he funded it, it. Like there's a lot of people in the team. And two, I think there'll be a lot of people miss those big nights of boxing. You know, I think he's been great for boxing. We've got to remember he's a two-time world champion who's transformed the sport, give loads of kids hope. You know, from his journey where he was, where he's got to. So we got to credit him for that. I don't think he gets enough of that. But you know, it's enough of me ranting on about it because I'll, I'll, I'll probably get another little bit of backlash for it. So. Um, yeah, but let's just look. Heavyweight division at the moment is good. Joshua is still very much in the mix with that. Chris Eubank Jr., Conor Ben. We spoke there uh, afterwards. We didn't manage to catch an interview on that. I know obviously yeah. you were you were firing off yeah. to uh, to the AJ fight. So, just your thoughts on that, and uh, how do you see that one playing out? That's a good fight, you know, just because of the weight stipulation, you know, because they made it at 157. If it was made at 160, you've got to go for Eubank because he's just so big, and, and, and you know, and, and you'd think that Eubank would just you know outmaneuver him, outbox him, just use his sheer size really. But because it's made at 157 and the rehydration clause has been put in place and everything else it's a 50-50 fight it's a tough fight to call because it doesn't matter if you're really good and you're big and but your weight drain trust me you, that is not a good place to be and Conor Ben is firing all cinders this goes back history man you know what I mean family feuds like they both gonna want to win they're both gonna go to a place that no normal human being would go I can't wait I can't call it at the moment because it's a tough one to call but I think it's gonna be an incredible fight right we must turn to something else you're not only just a good boxer, or you were a good boxer, you're not only just good on comms and as a pundit, you're also now a fishing champion. I watched this the other day on the oh. TV, and uh, yes. that was brilliant. Talk us through that. Yeah, so it's a fishing competition I do that goes out on ITV4. It's a targets fishing, target fishing competition, which is I've been doing for years now. Um, and loads of different celebrities do it. So I think there was Steve Davis, Jackpot Lewis, um, Terry Harper was in it, Kel Brook was in it. Um, who else was in it? There was loads of names in there. Um, Bobby George, the dark player, was in there. Um, to, to name a few. Um, Apologise if I've forgotten any of you, but just to name a few. And um, yeah, I won it, man. Did you see it? I come out of nowhere. Like after the first hour, nothing caught like. I don't know, cut the little minnows. Second hour, boom, I've caught a couple of big ones. Third hour, yeah, and it, it ended up just between me and Kel Brook, funny enough. And we was like battling it out. And I think I nicked him. The last klaxon went, the last buzzer went, and, and I got a bite. So like you're allowed 10 minutes to get it in. I think that's what won me the competition. But yeah, it was it was wicked. Jess Harding does an amazing job there. He's my old manager. And um, yeah, it was it was good fun and it was for a worthy cause, a worthy charity. So yeah, glad we got it done. 
You mentioned there Terry Harper, you're on a team with Terry Harper. I think your team won the, uh, won the fishing yes. as well overall. Uh, obviously, massive fight for Terry with Hannah Rankin. Uh, thoughts on that fight? Yeah, looking forward to that, actually. Difficult one to call because um, Hannah may be slightly bigger, but Terry Harper's a, a great fighter and she's a workhorse. Uh, like maybe lean towards Terry in that one, but it's a tough one to call because Hannah's a great fighter as well. Women's boxing at the moment is going from strength to strength, isn't it? You put me on the spot of all these women's fights and like, I don't, you know, Jeez, imagine that. Yeah, they can all fight now, can't they? I'm not fancying my chances anymore with, it, with these girls. So, um, yeah, no, it's a tough one to call. I think both girls have done incredibly well, but I lean towards Harper. Super. Spencer Oliver, thank you very much for giving into boxing some of your time today, and hopefully we'll catch up with you throughout fight week. I'm looking forward to that, mate, definitely. Appreciate your time. Thank you.